Welcome to the channel. Always seeing or learning something new at Drag Boss Garage. What's up guys, Tim Alston with Drag Boss Garage. So I'll kind of let you know where I'm at. You have seen me do the sub assemblies. Now, one thing I will say, and I don't have it apart, but I talked to Paul um, Adamatis, and he told me when he watched the video that I had to put the pressure plate in the wrong spot and that it needs to be at the top. The thicker pressure plate, which kind of looks like this, needed to be at the top. I had it against the piston, so I had changed that. Now, I rechecked the clearances on this. And he recommends 45 on the direct and 25 on the forward. Now, when I measured this and you saw the video, it was 45 thousandths. He also told me that you really shouldn't measure it that way. You should assemble the drum clutch pack, put it on top of the pump, put a dial indicator in it, and then measure the clearance that way. So I set it up as he told me to, and let's see, let me put this back, and let's see what it measures. I'm gonna move the camera down, and I turn the air pressure down to about 40 PSI. I don't need to be blasting things out. Um, this has the Teflon pump rings, which there's two styles, I think he said. One was 95 thousandths, the groove on the stator, and one was 125. So I have the 95 thousandths one. So let's look at it up, look at it. So I have it set up. Obviously there's the pump, the direct, the clutches are in there, and I had them set at 45. Now I set up the dial indicator, let me make sure that thing's zero. Perfect. And then grab my air. And let's see what we have. So you have to correlate the pump to the case of which feed is for the direct and which one is for the forward. And I showed you that on a previous video. So this one right here is the direct. So let's see what it does. That's not zero, but it looked like 32. That's 35. So according to this, it's a little tight. So now to fix that, I need some thinner steels. So I think there's a 161 in here, which he always said to put the thinner steel in the middle of the pack. So I'm gonna to have to look through my steels. Let me recheck some of that and then we'll try it again and see if we can get it closer to 45. But when I check it with my gauge, it's like 45. Can't really do it with it on the pump, let's see. Yeah. It seems like a tight 45. But obviously when I did the air, you just checked it out. So that's how you really should do it. And then what I'll do is I'll also put on the forward and we'll check that out. I've never did this before, but let's see if I can set that up. So now I put in, I went through the steels. I found another one that was a little bit thinner. And let's see what this one is. Let's zero our gauge. And I got 40, 42, 43. So is that good enough? I don't know. I'll talk to Paul and see what he says. Now let's see what we can get with the forward drum. It's interesting. I never did this, so it's kind of, actually, it's kind of cool. But you can see here, I got the dial indicator set up. Um, I can show you here, spin it around. I just have it set onto the pump itself with a magnetic base. What's up guys? Back to Drag Boss Garage. So let me kind of tell you the rundown. You'd see me do the direct clutch measurement with the air check 
and dial indicator. I love that. So I had talked to um, Paul Adamatis about this. And what he told me was, is you want to make sure that you push down on the drum itself in this area where the pressure plate is. And that's going to give you some clearance there. And whatever that is, let's say it's 3,000s, 5,000s, whatever it is, then you air check it and add it to that amount. And that'll give you the correct amount of clearance. So I have it set up, the forward clutch on the direct drum. And you probably can see, yeah, you can see it a little bit. Man, that rotates nice. It's got a nice seal to it. It feels good. So let me move the camera down, and then we'll go ahead and check this out and see what we got. So I have my trusty dial indicator. Get that set up. You zero your gauge. And the thing is, there's a little bit of a fudge factor here because when you go to push down on that pressure plate, it moves a little bit. So you can kind of skew your results. So you kind of want to do it just enough to move the gauge and get a reading instead of trying to keep looking at it. So put it on there. I mean, that's five thousandths right there. It almost comes back to zero. Let's check it again. Four thousandths. That might be, that's five if you try pushing and it could even be skewed, but we know it's four to five. So we'll say that four to five thousandths. Let me write that down in my book. Then we'll air check it. And it's off by like half a thousandths. There you go. So let's see what it comes up with. That's 23, almost 24. So 23 plus what? Four, that's 27 thousandths right there. Could it be 28? Yeah, it could be. But we're gonna say, we're gonna say 27. Let's check it again. Now I do it there, it's like really close to 24. So, you know, 24, three, 28 thousandths. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference being that close. So let's see. We're I got another steel. Let's switch it around and just see what we can get. See if it changes it. So at least we know 27 to 28. Before it was a real tight 25, which might have been even less than that. And I always go down a couple steels that I'm going to change. Let's try this guy here. It's really just trial and, and error. I mean, you trial and see what it looks like and see how it fits as far as clearance wise, and you go with what you know. And the thing is, you want it all to fit square. And you can see how that plate, you don't want to cock it, you want to put it in straight. Just for the hell of it, let's see what this 25 said. Now that fits an easy 25. Before, I was like trying to force it in and you're actually just pushing it and collapsing the spring. So, turn on the magnet, zero your gauge. There's like four. Now, can I get to five? Probably if I push hard, but there it is. We'll say it's five. You can see it going there a couple times. 
So now I'll make sure it's zero, which it pretty much is. Now we'll air check it. So let's say it's five thousandths. That's a 20, look at that, it's 25, 6, 7. So that's 27 thousandths. Almost 28, right? So 27 and 5, you're looking at 32 there. So that's too much. See, there's that's, that's crazy. It's 0. That's 5. That's 27. There you go. So now we'll switch back and we'll see what that comes at. And that's the thing about these steels. They're all, they all, I mean, we're talking a thousand, so a few thousands, so it's not crazy, you know. But if I can get it closer, I'll get it closer. Maybe a little less. Let's see. Let's take this guy. Zero our gauge. Push down. And that's like three right there. Three, maybe four if you're pushing hard. Let's say it's three or four, either way. Three or four. Now we'll get the air. Zero. Look at that. Four. That's 24 thousandths. That's crazy. I don't think you're going to get much better than that. You know, it's better than it was, I think. So that's what we'll do. Let's just verify it. Actually, let's rotate this around to a different area. And one thing that he said is these drums are not always perfect. When they machined them at Ford, they had a lot of fudge factors with it. So nothing's ever perfect. So you can see I'm doing it, I'm not doing it straight. There it is. So that's like five, that's like six. So it measures different in different areas. Let's try somewhere else. That's like three, we'll say th four. That's three, okay, three thousandths. It's at zero, we air check it, and that's 24. So there's 27 thousandths right there. You know what I'm going to call it? Good enough for government work. So there it is. You see the difference right in front of you? It's kind of crazy. You change one steel, it changes the clearance. They're all not perfect. You change the rotation of where you put this, it's still different. You know, so I'm going to pick the best number because it makes me feel better. 27 thousandths is good to go. Well, there you have it, guys. Measuring the forward clutch clearance with the air check method. So this is the most accurate way. 
you've seen some variance between the two. Just changing one steel can change differences. Same with the, the, the frictions. They're not all perfectly what they say they are. You know, if it says it's 78,000 steel, I've seen them at 74, 77. Whether that's where, I don't know. But you've seen it measure. Uh, I'm going to go with that. 27 thousandths is good for me. I'm happy with that. Uh, I appreciate Paul Adamatis for showing me this method. And hopefully you guys can learn something from this. Because it's it's this is the stuff you don't see uh, on YouTube with transmissions. I've never seen anybody air check things. And I haven't looked either. But there's there's probably somebody doing it. It's mostly the feeler gauge method, which I've used for years. But now that I know how this works and it's more accurate, that's what I'm going to go with. That could have been why I had some early clutch wear. I could have had the wrong clearance. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I said, you're always seeing or learning something new at Drag Boss Garage.